Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ our head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious finding of the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever, and our confidence alone. To this temple where we call you, come, O Lord of hosts, and stay. Come with all your love in kindness, hear your people as they pray, and your fullest benediction shed within these walls they ask to gain, what they gain from you forever, with the blessed to retain, and hereafter in your glory evermore with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, we confess that we are sinners and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, your ears are open always to the prayers of your people. Open our hearts and minds to you, that we may live in harmony with your will and receive the gifts of your Spirit. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis, the 18th chapter. 
Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah! How very grave their sin! I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, while Abram remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place, not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose that five of that fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of the five? And he said, I shall not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, ah, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, 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 do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty. I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hand. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called you answer, you increased the strength of my soul. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. All earth's kings shall thank you. When they hear the words of your mouth, they shall sing of the Lord's ways. How great is the glory of the Lord. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. 
Though I walk in the midst of affliction, you give me life and frustrate my foes. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. A reading from Colossians, the second chapter. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ when you were buried with him in baptism. You were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities, made a public example of them, triumphing over them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia! You have received the spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia! Alleluia! A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, uh, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived. I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Ah, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, 
and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who searches finds, everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you? If your child asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If then you, who, by the way, are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. In the midst of today's psalmody, that word from David stands as a profound statement of faith. We were baptized into this faith in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That triune name, that was the focus of our worship but a few weeks ago in early June. Those who have been baptized into this name, 
those who have put on the Christ who died and rose for them know the life to which we are called. These green weeks, a time when the color reminds us of the growth in the garden and in the lawn, even when drought has made the lawn largely brown, that sense of growth is what this time of year is all about. And this week's lessons focus us on this idea that to be baptized into Christ, as we have been, is to have his life become our life. And more than once, as we heard in the very first words of today's gospel, Jesus was praying in a certain place. Yes, he preached to the multitudes on a mountain. He fed the thousands on the plain. He healed the blind. He raised the dead. But he also stepped away took that Shabbat, that Sabbath time of rest, to reconnect with his Father. And that is, after all, what the third commandment is all about. It's not about meticulously avoiding anything that your neighbors might construe as work on a day when the Word of God tells you to rest. That becomes more work to try to observe the minutia of the regulations of the rabbis and the scholars who have gone before us. That is not what it means to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It is about, of course, to not neglect the Word of God, but to hold it sacred, gladly hear and learn it. And so we come together, sometimes in person within these four walls, but sometimes virtually, and we come together to engage in that holy conversation that is prayer. You may answer every question correct on a quiz or a test given you by your pastor at before Confirmation Day, saying that you knew all the right answers about the real presence and about the work of the Holy Spirit and so forth and so on. You can have all the right answers, but if you are not a person of prayer, it becomes a question how much you are an actual disciple. You may engage in great works of social service and outreach in the name of the gospel. You may feed the hungry at a soup kitchen. You may talk to your neighbors on the street corners about what it means to believe in Jesus Christ. But without being a person of prayer, the question becomes, what are you missing? On the day I called, you answered. Prayer in the Christian life flows out of the experience of prayer. You can't do a Bible study and look up every passage in your concordance where the word prayer shows up and then say you understand what it means to be a person of prayer. When you pray, don't stand on the street corners, don't stand up in the synagogue so that you get noticed by everybody, don't take a knee on the 50-yard line so that everybody sees what you're doing, says what a great Christian you are because of that, and then feels obligated to follow you. That is not prayer. When you pray, go into your room in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, Jesus says, in answer to the question of, Lord, teach us to pray, he gives them what we know as the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
and we go on autopilot. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know the rest of it going forward. Imagine if on a Sunday in the bulletin it would actually be not the words we know so well, the words we grew up with from our childhood, but the words Luke actually records. Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. Do not bring us into the time of trial. Well, that's not how I learned it at the feet of my parents. That's not what I had to memorize and recite before Pastor Johnson, but it is indeed the word of Scripture that reveals to us the will of God, which is that we should pray to our Father, to the one whom we cry out to, as we said in our Alleluia verse, Abba, Father, Daddy God, you're the one to whom we cry out. This is, of course, not a new aspect of discipleship. It's been part of the life of the people of God from the beginning. For, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, there was that prayer of Abram. Confronted with the moral decadence, in fact, the creepiness of the sexual mores of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, God rightfully was ready to call down his judgment on them. For after all, the wages of sin is death. They are engulfed in sin. Therefore, death is the inevitable consequence. And whether it comes after 80 years while you're laying in your bed surrounded by loved ones, or whether it comes when fire descends from above in an unexpected way, it is, after all, the same reality. And what does Abraham do? He prays. Father, may your name be hallowed and your kingdom come. And it seems to me this is how it's going to happen. When we forgive our sins as we forgive everyone else. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And Abraham could have just prayed that prayer for himself, for his wife, his children, his servants, his household. Save us from this time of trial. What do we care what happens to those pagan unbelievers, to those moral miscreants? But that's not what he prays. He prays that prayer, do not bring us to to the time of trial for them. Lord, do not bring them to a time of trial that, granted, they rightly deserve. And then, in the most beautiful picture of what true prayer is all about, Abraham involves himself in a negotiating session with God. I'm not a big fan of haggling over prices. And a couple of times I've taken vacations to places where when you get off the ship and step on solid land, there is a bazaar, a marketplace of every kind of possible little trinket and whatever. And everyone is trying to sell you something. And you say, not interested. And they come back with a little lower of a price. And you say, okay, not 10 bucks, but I'll give you eight for it. And he comes back with, well, what about nine? And back and forth and back and forth. Until that time when the merchant receives what he's after, you took his product, you receive what you were after that keepsake from your trip. 
That is precisely what Abraham is doing. He's negotiating with God. Now think about the absurdity of that. One can envision a negotiation between equals, but God is God and we are not. We've got nothing to bring to the table, and yet, time and again, Abraham approaches the Lord with a plea for mercy for others. On what basis could Abraham possibly claim to negotiate the price down for God? It is precisely his own experience. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. Abraham had seen in his own spiritual life the power of God to answer prayer. How often must Abram and Sarai have prayed fervently for the gift of a child and as so often happens in our prayers, it didn't happen that day, that month, that year, that decade. But the day would come when on the day that Abram prayed, God answered and increased the strength of his soul. For he received at that point far more than just a descendant to carry on the family name. He received strength of soul, having found God to be faithful to his promises, one who hears and answers prayer. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer was an insight that Abram had made. And because of that, he could turn the power of prayer over not to simply obtaining what he wanted. After all, the Lord's Prayer is not my will, but thine be done. Prayer is not some genie's lamp to rub in order to get our wishes, but instead, it is the kingdom of God which comes and which we have the blessed opportunity to be a part of in our faith, in the faith grounded in the word of God that we hear and meditate on, and yes, in the prayers that we offer for ourselves and others. It is precisely when our prayer, like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, is that the Father's will might be done rather than our own, that we can know with 100% certainty that our prayer is answered. Our prayer for a new bike under the Christmas tree may not be. Our prayer for that promotion on the job and a bump in our salary may not get answered. Not even that prayer for healing after a rough bout with cancer. Those prayers may not be answered because they are our will and maybe they are God's and maybe they are not. But when we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy God, we know that his will is going to be done. We are invited in these days after Trinity Sunday, as we unpack the meaning of what it means to be baptized into that triune name, to take up a lifestyle of prayer, not of wishes, not of demands, but of simple prayer. And on the day when we call, we know that he will answer. For why? Because he increases the strength of our soul. People of God, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? <laughs> There's trouble everywhere. We should never be discouraged. And why? Because we have the blessed gift of being able to take it to the Lord in prayer. We can find no friend that faithful 
who will all our sorrows share. <laughs> Jesus knows our every weakness. So, St. Mark's, take it to the Lord in prayer. That is what it means to be baptized into his name. To cry out, our Father who art in heaven. To cry out, Daddy, God. To the one who hears our prayers, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Living together in love and in hope, let's confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus promises that our Heavenly Father hears the prayers of those who come before him, and so let's confidently lift our hearts in prayer. That in our work and worship together, our church and parish may reflect our faith in Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy that the school board, the church council, the voting body of our congregation may all have wisdom, energy, and creativity in order to plan for the future ministry of our day school. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, that the families of Arts and Mission New York might experience the Holy Spirit's love, joy, and peace in their midst. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod's disaster response, our mission for the month of July, might make it possible for people to experience the mercy of God in times of crisis. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our sisters and brothers in Christ of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Yonkers, that they might bring the good news of Jesus Christ to their community through the leadership of their pastor, the Reverend Eric Johnson. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all those who serve the church as pastors, teachers, and counselors, that they might be ministers of God's reconciling and healing love, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy that nations, cities, and peoples plagued by war, oppression, and destruction may be rebuilt in the peace and justice of God. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, that men and women of good will may speak like Abraham on behalf of the innocent victims of poverty, oppression, greed, and abuse. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, that the sick, the suffering, and the dying may find hope and healing in company with Christ the Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, that God would hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for those who have died and now know the new life of the risen Jesus, including St. Mary, the mother of our Lord, St. Mark, the patron of our parish, St. James, the elder, whose feast we keep tomorrow, Saints Mary, Martha, and Lazarus of Bethany, St. Olaf, Robert Barnes, 
and our own brother, John Schaefer, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Loving Father, we know you hear our prayers. May the spirit in which we ask these things inspire us and enable us to make these prayers a reality. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remain close to the people you've enriched with your word. Grant that we may pass from our former ways to new life in the risen Christ. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Uh...